I'm sorry for the technical issues. This one is about uh, this topic uh, EPTCP, just as my major research topic. But then we think it can apply to TCP also. So, to support new TCP options, is the stand standard way to extend TCP. But to implement it, it requires the kernel change. So it's hard, just for experiment, it's hard to implement new TCP options, and even more with deployment. So to start, we, based on TCP EPF by Lawrence platform, which is available in new service since 2013, which already has had different hooks at many phases of the TCP connections and uh, hooks at uh, where the connection state changes. It also has many uh, features, support to read and write to fuse the TCP sub directly or indirectly. So, to insert a new option, if we look at the output path of TCP, it connects this loops. Uh, place in TCP transmit SKD, which uh, compute the option size and actually write it in the TCP option write. So we create add two hooks, and the first one is to adjust the TCP option size, and the second one is to actually write the new options. But there's one more thing is we need to update the current MSS because otherwise it might get fragmentation. Then on the input part, we need to pass the new options. In the this pass options functions, this is uh, simpler. It just need to pass the data into the this DPF program, and then it can read the new option and apply the uh, any uh, actions. So first we look at the overhead. Uh, in fact, the, uh, the hosts are disabled by default to avoid the overhead on the fast path, but for this test we decide to trigger on every package. So we test with the on client and server which connect through one 10 gigs link. And this is the uh, throughput overhead. So you can see that the overhead of the case that we insert the options is about 0.3%. So that's exactly the uh, amount of the TCP option size increase compared to the TCP payload. And we didn't see any uh, increase in terms of uh, wrap chip time. For the CPU usage, if we look at the uh, so uh, for case here we can see that is around 10% on both sender and receiver. So let's look at different use case. The first one uh, is dissipate user timeout. So which is the maximum time that uh, appear waiting for the act, the flight data before aborting the connections. So it's useful when client predict a bad connectivity and want to extend the connection lifetime or server is busy and want to close it quickly. So it's specifying the IFC, but it's not implemented on Linux yet. So we implement it by two BPF program, one is insert UTO option and another one is pass it and set the value on the peer. The first one is, uh, the second one is to request the connection, uh, congestion control. So for example, if the client have, uh, want to specify the preference for low latency over throughput, it can specify like BBR or Vegas. The second, maybe uh, the third one, may be more interesting. That is to try to set the initial congestion window. For example, when the receiver, like the mobile phone, want to 
uh, announce the server about the um, the desire initial congestion window because it's no more about the network bottleneck. So there's one thing here is to uh, about the DDoS attack. So to avoid that, the server might check if the IP comes from a trust list. The last one is the delay act options. So the motivation is that too many acts or too few acts, both are not good. So there's a need to know the remote act delay strategy and request the desired configurations. This option would carry two values, the delay act timeout, not the uh, absolute, but the relative value uh, as the fraction of RTT. And the second one is the number of segment count that uh, the uh, receiver will wait before sending an act. So what about the meter box? To avoid the meter box, we will use the experimental TCP options. Uh, and if is not supported by a was provider, we should uh, tell them to support that. So the moment the cost status of uh, our framework is quite small, the kernel chance itself is around 75 line, and for each use case, it may need some kernel chance if, uh, if the, uh, the value need to be applied, is not supported yet by uh, BPF set of opt. Otherwise, we only need to write the BPF program. There are two caveats. The first one is that the option size is only uh, four bytes or less because we use the argument of the TCP BPF, but it's extensible to 16 bytes. And then the second is that it uh, coupled to C group V2. We so, but I think it can be decoupled later. So now the second part, uh, because this is my thesis topic, that is about MPTCP. So, in MPTCP, the a major task is to manage the part, and in fact, it should be controlled by applications or users. In fact, in, uh, in the MPTCP, uh, our tree branch is already support a uh, generic path manager framework that based on Netlink, and it allows to write the path manager in user space. It provides a clean layer, but there are several issues. Uh, the Netlink message might be lost, and to support uh, different facilities, we need uh, different features, we need different facilities, which might be much situation more complicated. So what about an alternative solution that based on eBPF? It would provide performance, it has built support for this state tracking, and it's easy to apply. The policy, for example, is one to uh, accept or reject a subflow request from the peer. But it also limit by the current eBPF limit, maybe less layering separation, and the locking may be trickier. So our prototype for this uh, tracking event we use new TCP BPF combats, and to store the address uh, and subflow, it would use BPF maps, and to open the subflow, that's the major one, we need to write a new helper function. So, to insert new TP BPF callback is straightforward, but it only supports at most three arguments. So we need some other channels to pass the metadata. Therefore, we extend the TCP BPF context. Uh, so for MPTCP stack, the struct sub also contain MPTCP fuse, so we also mirror this fuse into Sokov's context. So to open subflow, we create new helper functions with uh, the sock of as the uh, context and the four tuples uh, as the additional metadata. 
So if a few of a tuple is unset, we use the existing or the cannula size IP or port. And we extend the metadata and other FTC info from the socket context. But usually uh, we are in the SOC, uh, SOC IRQ context, which means we cannot open SOC flow directly. Therefore, we uh, create a book queue and uh, carry it. And uh, the SOC flow is actually open later. At the moment, uh, the code chain is like this, and we also implement to minimum path manager as the PPF programs. So and if port and full mesh is to uh, basic path manager in MPDCP. So there are currently uh, many open issues, but the main one is uh, we do not uh, not yet handle the event of local IP address change because we need to send the event of each PPF, uh, send the event to each PPF program in each C group. And this information of C group need to pass with the, within the socket. So uh, maybe we need to create uh, multiple dummy socket, each for a C group and store it somewhere. So for other thing, uh, it should be more straightforward to remove subflow, to store the subflow, to support the dual stack. The last thing is to support multiple path manager. Uh, for example, each path manager uh, should be support per net namespace, but I don't know how this could go. So, uh, more details is in our paper, uh, and the source code is in a Git repository. Okay, so that's all from my part. Well, it's amazing. You're the most. Uh, I, I'm hoping there's a lot of questions. Hi, this is Eric. Um, when you do performance tests, don't use iperf3 because it just sends big TSO packets. At 10 gig, it's one packet every 50 microseconds. So you can't really see any change in performance. If you want uh, to like uh, have a sense of the performance cost of adding eBPF hooks in the option um, parsing or setting, that's actually three hooks. So that's three indirect calls per packet. If you want to have a better sense of that, you should send very small packets, like one byte RPC, something like that. Uh, yes. Okay. Yes. okay. Uh, just that when I check with the wire shot, is uh, yeah, it does uh, accumulate two packets, but yeah, but I don't know. Yeah. Can yeah. That may be the, yeah, I need to check that. Thank you. Hi, Hong. This is uh, Lawrence Brackman. Yeah. Uh, so I'm excited about this use of uh, TCP BPF. And, uh, you know, we'll have to look into the overheads, but, uh, you know, uh, send me the patches for like internal review so that, you know, hopefully we can, once they're ready, we can push them upstream. Yeah, sure. Uh, I mean, work. work on that. Okay. Uh, anybody else? Okay, I'll. I'll you finished in good time, right? So I guess I'll mm -hmm. chime in. So your goal is two things. You try by introducing these TCP options. You're not going to wait for an ITF standardization to happen. You, you can just introduce them as long as you control both end systems, yes? Yes, yes. As yeah, well. because the to, for experimental TCP option, that is, uh, we can use that. Uh, and if we want to officially use that, we can register with INL. But to, yeah, to use experimental option is much easier than to write, use a specific, uh, another dedicated uh, option kind. That's it. So BPF is opening some new frontiers here. 
and no need to upstream anything. Am I correct? You can just do your own thing. Yeah, I think that depends on the, uh, for example, if some companies want uh, to make it straightforward. I don't know. So they need to have some functionality in the kernel. So either, you know, it's already existing set socket options or you need to create them, right? Uh, so. Yeah, so one, so back Eric again, uh, one suggestion would be to, for you to use a static branch because most people won't use uh, experimental uh, TCP, but just production ready TCP. So they probably don't want to add cost in their fast path. So just use a static branch because if you are not using uh, experimental option on your kernel, that, that would be just a NUP. So that's very, very fast or it's actually free. So yeah, I would suggest you to use a static branch. Look at the TCP MD5, for example, uh, which is also using a static branch. Okay. Okay, so not, not kernel options, not config options, no, just static. You want it always to be there, just, okay. Nobody else has a question? Okay, I've run out of my questions. So let's give it up for Juan, our second. Thank you. Thank you.